want to point out the wall here and the former niche above the door. So in some previous videos, I kept saying I wanted to leave the niche above the door that shows um, the history of this door. Oh, bonjour, Steven. No, 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 blah, blah, blah. Je filme de la porte. Lancy and true. So, um, and now we were gonna leave it, the niche there. And we had come up to a, a plan that we were just gonna put a, a thin layer of stones at the back of it, because on the back side was just sort of these uh, red clay blocks. Very similar to the material that's the floor tiles called Timets that were at the back, but they weren't like anything that particularly pretty. So we had a discussion to decide we would put stone just at the back, but leave the niche. And then there might have been a little confusion. 21 degrees and sunny Just the way I always wanted <laughs> And Stephen today said to me, <laughs> Ah, regardez, j'ai fini le... le uh, rem, rempli le bouche, le tro. The truth, I've run through the truth. A, which is, uh, I finished filling in the hole and I looked at it and thought, ah, oh, wait, we were supposed to leave a niche there. So I called Mark and he said, yes, uh, Stephen filled in and he was so proud of it, I didn't want to say anything. But I have to say, I actually think I now prefer it filled in than leaving that niche. It had been occurring to me that if we left the niche there, like to put a fancy vase or something in there, it was just going to be a dust, dust gathering place. And I had been thinking about that in the back of my mind for quite a while. <laughs> so, and now that I see it, what, what it really was important to me was to maintain the history that you can see that the door was once bigger, that there's the original lintel at the top, lintel at the top, and then the new one put in when the door got shortened. And we still see all of that, even with it filled in. In fact, and you can, obviously there's dress stone to the sides. But it's very clear that this is a spot that was filled in. And so actually in the end, I like it better. Steven now is working on the wall in the Vesto de Chef. And because we have these cute little lights, I can walk up the stairs like I'm on some gallery looking down. And since we're missing one pane, and we can see what Steven is doing. Uh, je, je montre qu'est-ce que tu fais avec les uh, joints. Oui. So uh, he's pointing the stones, or in French, le joint. Faire le joint. On dit faire le joint? Faire le joint de pierre, oui. Oui, faire le joint de pierre. So that's um, making the joints between the stones. Uh, and that's this is the process. He's got a mixture of lime and sand and water. So just a sable show a de l'eau. Sable show. Sable Pardon? Sable roux. Oh, sable roux. Okay. <laughs> so it's a red sand, as you can see. Uh, the, we can easily get the sand in this red color or in gray, uh, but by the time it dries and everything, the red sand really uh, makes a nicer looking look. And you can see that it's covering a lot of the stone, and that's because that's, he puts it on that way. And, um, oh, this is really great. We can see how he does it. You literally smack it into the wall. Just, it's like a little toss, and then you smooth it out. It is not nearly as easy as Steven makes it look. Send up a facile come, come to face. C'est la, la position qui est pas facile. Ah oui. D'être un auteur un peu. Oui. Bon, après, so, ça, ça se fait quand même. Hein. <laughs> so it's about your positioning in relation to the wall uh, that makes it work. But having done this myself a little bit, we had uh, a builder. Pas de pression. Voilà. <laughs> um, we had a builder, uh, Alexandra, uh, who's a, kind of an expert in building in the old styles teach all of us, so Stephen, myself, Ben. Uh, et Corey. Et Corey, that's right. Corey was, <laughs> we <laughs> uh, teach us all how to do this kind of work. And uh, let's just say I wasn't so great. Yeah. Stephen just immediately was able to do it. It was very annoying. Mais avant, il faut toujours humidifier le mur. Pardon? Humidifier. Ah, uh, oui, oui, oui. Je l'ai fait, mais ça ne peut sécher déjà. Ah. Uh, Faudrait peut-être que je le refasse. Ah. Uh, so tu, uh, tu dois... 
spray Ouais, je, je l'ai fait il n'y a pas longtemps, mais ça a déjà absorbé. Ah, oui. Je vais oui. le refaire parce que je vois que ça ne tient pas trop. Oui. So, Stephen is saying that he has to moisten the wall. And he had done that. So, he has a bottle where he sprays the wall with water. So, you, want, you don't want the stones pulling the moisture out of the um, lime material too quickly. You want the lime to, it chemically sets, is what really happens. And he's just realizing that he had sprayed the wall, but it has dried out since he sprayed it. So he needs to go and get the water and he has a sprayer for it. Uh, it I think he uses, ah, yes, since I'm here. We have a garden sprayer, but we only use this one for water. So it's not to look like, you know, some weird garden pesticides <laughs> or vinegar, which we often use on weeds. We, so it's practical to use that because you can easily spray and um, using his magic wand. Oh, there we go. That's better. So uh, he wets down the wall a little bit and then it helps the uh, pointing material, the, the lime, stick Et to the wall better. Pardon? Ça aide à accrocher. Ah, oui, oui. Exactly. Point. Exactly what I just said. It helps it stick to the wall. <laughs> um, or hook into the wall uh, if it's moist. And so he sprays it and then he'll start throwing the material on. And you kind of toss it on like you saw him doing it. It's a very traditional style. And then you just smooth it with the tip of your trowel. And so you usually use pointy trowels to do this kind of work. And you'll see as we look lower down on the wall, um, and not just his butt, you can see as we look further down on the wall, uh, the lime is covering a lot of the stones. It will get brushed off to reveal the stones underneath. So, um, so a lot more of the stone will become exposed. It's an interesting process, and it's a process that really hasn't changed in the hundreds of years that They've been doing this kind of work in chateaus across France and elsewhere in the wall, world, building of stone. And so this wall was done, I think most of this was done a day or two ago. They just filled in the top today. So it's, that's why the lime is a lot darker there. You can see right next to it around these bigger stones and towards the wall, the lime is much lighter. So that's the same lime mixture just um, dried out. So it's gonna dry out much lighter when it's, when it's done. And earlier today, I was checked in with Sylvain, who had finished the left of the chimney, and he is now working above to the right of the chimney. And I'll leave him to it because he looks like he's concentrating. And I check in on Ben, who, ah, so close to being done. It's fairly late, but we're almost there, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, so that's, that it's, that's looking really great. So it's just these two walls. The wall, um, actually there's three, the I know, one. there's the I'm third wall. <laughs> the invisible wall that we're, I'm looking through. So this wall's not built, completely built yet because we have this large sink coming into the scullery and it'll be very difficult to get it in uh, if we build the wall. There's gonna be a small door here, but it's kind of narrow and it'd be difficult to get it in. So we're leaving this wall open for the moment. The tile is gonna be on the window wall, this wall to the left, and the invisible wall, <laughs> that should be in front of me, um, but that won't be done until after we get the sink in. Uh, the sink is being built uh, for us, because uh, it's a commercial restaurant uh, kitchen sink, two basins, and a drain board on either side, but it's actually, I guess, not normal for restaurants to have drain boards on both sides. And so all the sinks I could find just had drain boards on one side of the sink. And so uh, we had contacted the company, or a company that makes them, and we asked about, do they have something with drain boards on either side? And they said, no, we don't, but we can make one. And uh, we realized that even though it's gonna cost a little bit more, but not too bad, it would be a lot easier and cheaper than just having a sink and then trying to build some cabinets on the sides and put drain boards on top or figuring something else out. It actually works out better in the end. So it'll be one stainless steel unit. 
So, and that's going along the tiled wall. This other wall, we're not tiling, we're just gonna leave that. And it's been plastered roughly. <laughs> I say that with a lot of judgment. Um, I don't know if we can see, or if I get closer, you can kind of see, you know, it's not like a completely smooth wall. So uh, I believe the idea, is this gonna get sanded yeah. or does it get another layer? No, 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 this is the only way, so we sand this okay. down. And then, and then the, it gets the painted. We'll smooth the rest of it out and we can paint. Yeah. All right. So this has a very thin layer of enduit, which is a very fine kind of plaster that um, will sand down and that will smooth it out. And then it's just primer and paint for the rest of that. So, and again, primer and paint, of course, above the top line of the tile. You can see it has a, a top edge chair rail tile. I can't stretch any higher, <laughs> but you can see that's what's at the top. And this has the baseboard tile like in the kitchen as well at the bottom. I really love this feature of this tile that we're using, uh, that you can get these kind of finishing pieces for like a, a skirting board or baseboard and trail rails and things like that. And I think that kind of creates, when you're tiling a whole wall, it just creates a really nice finish at the bottom and at the top in this case, if you're not going all the way to the ceiling. And it gives us a really nice, complete look. And then we don't actually have to have any kind of like wooden baseboards. These tiles act as the baseboard on that part. It occurs to me, I don't know if we're planning to put a, I guess we'll be putting a baseboard along this wall. Uh, Is this getting tiled across the bottom? Yes, with the uh, red tile. Red tile. You mean to I, I think that was the idea, yeah. Hmm. Have a little bit of Interesting idea. There'll be some discussions about that. I mean, if we've got more of this, we can... Yeah, I don't know if we have enough, actually. That'll have to find out. I was just thinking it would probably be best if we just continued the white baseboard tile on this I wall, even if we didn't, um, you know, mm -hmm. tile the wall above it. But I don't know if that's what Mark ordered. So we shall see. If we, uh, if we don't have enough, we can get some more before paint, so you can get Well, that's actually very true. And we probably have a lot, because I think he bought this for um, the bathrooms as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we should have a fair amount. We had a huge tile order. We ordered all the tile for the kitchen, the scullery, and the bathrooms. All the bathrooms in the house, of which there are 10. And... Um, so we had a huge tile order that we, so we had it all delivered at once and we have all that materials here, which is great. So as we move forward, we, we don't have to source more material and uh, it makes arranging for the shipping and stuff a lot more efficient. And by efficient, I mean, you know, price efficiency. <laughs> but it's all looking rather nice. I'm really getting a really good feel for these rooms getting completed and it's, as I keep saying, we're almost done. We're almost done. Well, good evening and welcome to the news. I'm Judy from Chateau Avensac. Uh, first up in the news, let's discuss Mark's health. Now, many of you know that he has been feeling very, very poorly the past um, six weeks, and uh, we want everyone to know that he is doing much, much better. There were some moments there where his kidneys were thinking about um, going south, but everything is on the upswing, and you'll see him on camera soon. There was a comment made about the arch in the library and about why the two gentlemen chose to open it. Let's go to correspondent Philip for an in-depth explanation. Now when we bought the house, this archway was filled in and there was a small door in where the archway is now and these bookshelves were shifted a little to the left and there was a matching small door to the right that went into the bedroom behind uh, this wall I'm looking at. And you could see the archway only from the inside of this kind of dark little vestibule. And we decided that we wanted to open up the archway to uh, kind of return this original feature to the house because it was clearly there and these changes were made later. The comment we received said we should have left it filled in as it would have created, one, better symmetry in the room. We could have centered the bookshelves and there would have been more symmetry. 
And two, it would have made the library a cozier space not to have this open archway uh, in the room. However, uh, our reasoning behind this is that the entrance into that bedroom behind was always kind of, it was either there was very little door in the library here, or you had to go through some other small doors into this dark vestibule, and then through these double doors, which was really the main entrance to the room, but they had been kind of blocked off by having closed in this vestibule. And the opening of the archway was really meant to create a more elegant and uh, entrance, something more representative to the entrance to this room, um, you know, from the main part of the house. And if you see, if we go through, you can see into this bedroom. This was actually one of the real principal bedrooms of the house. And in fact, uh, the last countess um, that lived in the house, this was her bedroom. Uh, so it was an important room. And you can see here on the left, that's the door that, or the doorway that went into the library. We've actually uh, walled it over. And we're going to put a door on it, on this side, uh, to make it into a closet because the walls are so thick. There's enough room to make a small closet there. So that is really what was the purpose of opening up this archway, is to create a more elegant entrance into this bedroom. Also, by removing that door, the small door that came directly into the library, I think we... Uh, we just create a little bit more separation between that bedroom and the library. So if the guests are staying in that bedroom and there's maybe some people hanging out in the library, uh, there's a more sense of privacy uh, going on. Also in tonight's news, there's been a lot of discussion in the comments about the uh, uh, wall treatment in the dining room. Not exactly wallpaper, but definitely paint and, uh, well, it was all about size. And let me inform you that the two gentlemen of the chateau will make a wise and thoughtful choice, and many of you have hit it right on the nail. It will be in between small and large, somewhere in the middle. We're now going to join correspondent Judy, who's out in front of the chateau with a very special story. Thank you, Judy. We're here in front of the chateau, about to go on the brand new exciting ride that's been installed here, soaring over Avonsac. Let's go in. Oh, pardon me. Oh, excuse me. Pardon me. Oh, pardon me. Well, it's really crowded in here. Pardon me. Oh, 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 oh that's nice. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, is there a first-class seat available? So we're into town. We are ready for takeoff. Oh, 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 oh,
even the air is scented like, like, sunflowers. Didn't know they smelled like that. Well, wasn't that wonderful? That ride is so much fun. Be sure to get down to the chateau and enjoy the adventure before it goes away. Soarin' over Avonsack. Judy, back to you. Well, Judy, that looked amazing. So much fun. I can't wait to go on Soarin' over Avonsack. I'm gonna get right down there and hopefully they'll let me cut to the beginning of the line. Well, that's all the news we have for this evening. I'm Judy from Chateau Avonsack. You have a great day. Bye! I am going to descend some treacherous steps because all the steps at the chateau are a little treacherous and I'm coming down into the mid terrace and this is what I've come to see and there's just a tiny little patch right here this is the cyclamen or cyclamen depending on where you're from uh, growing and it comes up in the fall it comes up every year and it just kind of spreads itself around the terrace and the uh, park in the petite foray which I've been corrected it's not a forest the forest has to be bigger and more diverse so it is a wood I've been told un petit bois small wood and where it's fairly shady. There's really beautiful carpets of cyclamen. And I've always uh, thought that the wood was quite magical naturally, but it takes on an extra special magic during the fall or the autumn. All right, so now here in the park, you can see in this area under this tree, it's really lovely clumps of cyclamen. And here I'm coming through the entrance of the wood. And because this area is fairly shady all the time, it really gets a lovely carpet of cyclamen. And you'll notice there's like a green path down the middle. And that's really the game trail. So we get a lot of animals that come through the park and they always walk the same path. This is really where I wanted to show. Okay, this area just gets completely carpeted. Sort of the thickest area of the cyclamen in the park. In the forest, in the wood. <laughs> but this area always gets so much. And it comes every year in the autumn, show their little purple faces. It's just this quiet little oasis, but it's right next to the park. And it just feels so remote. It's just big enough to take you away. And I just imagine happy little parties and events happening in here. If I continue along this path, I will come out towards the bottom of the park. But as I am desiring to go back to the house, I'm gonna turn up this way. I don't know if you've noticed, there's lots of bird activity going on in the wood. This beautiful patch of cyclamen. And there you can see the gates at the bottom of the park. So this is the end of the property and along this wall. Just the other side of that wall is the 
road that comes into the village. All right, up the stairs, which also needs some serious weeding. He was away for a week. Uh, and the nature is just trying to take over, so all this has to be, usually we power wash it off. It comes off really well. And there's the house with the staircase at a strange angle. But when you line up with it just right, everything fits into place. What's wrong with this picture? Yes, it's a giant pompous grass at the bottom of the stairs. I don't know how this grass got here. It's massive. We've hacked it all the way down. And of course it just comes back. Can I see in the distance? Oh, let's go take a look. Oh, I hear meow. Where, where's our meow? Meow. I hear meow. I don't know where it is. I don't know who it is. Oh, maybe it's on the wall. Meow. Looking at the moat. It looks very green if you look the in the water. That's because it actually has, it's a little plant with these tiny little leaves that floats on the surface. So it gives it that green look to it. All right, I heard a meow, but I have no idea where the meow is. Or is. It sounded like it was coming from the moat. Ruby, what are you doing? <laughs> She's buried. At the very edge of the moat. Ruby. Ruby. What are you doing? She looks like she's chasing something. Ruby. Psst, psst, psst. Ru. Oh, God, she's got something. All right, let's go rescue some petite animal from the evilness of my cat. Ruby, what are you doing? Ru? Yeah, Morel. No, it's okay. I'm glad you found the little cute little animal. And now, now you can leave it alone. And hopefully, it will get away. Ruby? Yeah. What are you doing? Ru? Now that you've found it, can we just leave it now? Yes, you did a good job. You did an amazing job. Hi, hi, honey. I see the kitten. I see the kitten. And we're always right. Well, we can conclude that he has not been down in the moat in a while. Because <laughs> this normally is all cleared out. But we have had a lot of rain. plants to grow. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing the progress going on in the Chateau renovations and our new special attraction ride, Soren over Avisac. <laughs> it's quite an adventure. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey with us and supporting us. We really appreciate that. And we love hearing from you, so let us know what you think in the comments. And a special thank you to our patrons whose contributions go directly towards the renovation and refurbishment of the Chateau. I'm Philip at Chateau Avensac.
I hope you enjoyed seeing our progress in the chateau and the renovations that are going on. And also our new special attraction ride soaring over Cali uh, not California. <laughs> That's in Disneyland. <laughs> Oops. Hi, this is Philip in Chateau Avantac. Cyclamen. Cyclamen. Let's call the whole thing off.